What's up, everybody? Lockout men in the building, in the truck, chilling tonight. Man, let me explain something to you guys right quick before I bring this gentleman on right quick in this uh, Lockout Men podcast tonight. Let me tell you something. I am down here in Texas. You feel me? Texas. Texas. If you guys is not down here by, I don't know, say like three, especially over here in Katy, Texas, if you're not down here by like three, four, maybe I'll go three. If you're not down here by three, it's over. I'm telling you, it is over. I went over to the Loves, and I mean, it's all jacked up over there, man. It is jacked up. And then I was coming out, right? I was coming out. Once I come out, tell me why there was like two tractor trailers parked side by side on the road i mean i literally had to back up about two maybe about 10 seconds to back up so i could pull the trailer straight and then come around tell me why i had to do that i mean hopefully you guys don't have to do that but i had to do that tonight but anyway anyway that's it's not about me it's not about me it's about my guests that i got on today my man i met this young dude uh, back in the Zello channel, can't remember what what was it? BCH? No, no, no. It was which which one was it? Grind? Which one was it? Trucker Kings and Queens? Trucker Kings and Queens. Yeah, 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 yeah. We met up in uh, Trucker Kings and Queens, and then uh, we moved over to uh, First Amendment, and I think uh, uh, and a few more, a few more. But uh, Trucker Kings and Queens is where me and this uh, dude. Uh, hooked up at uh, I got a chance actually I got a chance to meet up with him at uh, Iowa 80 yeah Iowa 80. yeah we met up at uh, Iowa 80 truck stop back in the day yeah I got a chance to meet up with this dude he was with uh, he was with a few companies we we're gonna get in we're gonna get into all of that all of that this dude been grinding for for a good minute uh, he knows his way around. I believe he hit all 48 states. I want you guys to please put your hands together for my man, Young Grind. What's going on, man? What's going on? What's going on, like out, man? What's going on, YouTube fans? It's like out, man. Thanks for y'all supporting him, sharing his videos. Y'all go ahead and share this video. You know, you got DeMarco O'Brien, Young Grind Global, Young Grind, YG, YGG. You know, that's everywhere it goes. Hey, Been in the business. Hey, go go ahead and uh, let them know who you are, Grind. Go ahead and finish. Let, let them know who you are. Also, hey, do that do that intro that you always used to do too, man. Go go ahead. Let me let me stop talking. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you got to do your like right here. Young Grind, Global Young Grind, YG, YGG, all 48 states. Been out here going on about six, seven years. Hit all 48 states. Uh, coast to coast, out here 365 days a year through all, the, through all the ups and downs. You know, bad weather, good weather, company to company. And, uh, you know, just here to let y'all know that thinking about coming into the industry and, you know, what to look out for and how to be safe successful because it's, it's it's a challenge to get your CDLs, but it's not too bad. But it's a quick of a second blink of an eye to lose your CDLs or livelihood. Speaking of uh, out here too. Speaking of uh, getting them CDLs, man, where where you started from, man? Did you uh you started with a company or you got in you got in uh, got in through school? I got in through uh, CR England Premier Trucking School and. Uh, uh, Indiana, Gary, right. Indiana. All right. What's uh? What was your experience with that? How how did that work out with CR? You say CR England or CRST? CR England. All right. So how how did that work out with you? Uh, we'll see CR England. Well, we know that you got your license, but what was yeah. your experience? <laughs> what was your experience with? Uh, with them, you know, it was like my grandfather. He did it for thirteen years, so he basically taught me how to back up and whatnot. So one thing I need to know through them was basically shifting, which I already kind of knew how to shift also, and pre-trip. But with them and what I see how they treat other students is like they gave, at that point in time, 
they gave people that was didn't necessarily, you know, didn't have the knowledge, they gave them multiple chances to pass. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, cool. So, you know, instructors didn't really like me because when you come into a, a school and you've been taught by somebody else before you came to that school, it's hard for them to teach you something, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and, and train you. But, you know, other than that, uh, to this day, I would recommend most people to CR England. But as far whoa, as... Whoa, 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 bro. Whoa, bro. We, 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 you, you giving CR, we talking CR England here. So you giving, you giving CR England the thumbs up for, for a new Jazz that's coming in the game now? I mean... Not, not too much, you know what I'm saying? Because of what I've been seeing from CR England since I left them, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Because you know the game, the game changed. The game, bro. The, the game done changed since I've been there. You know, over six years. So, nah, they not at the top of. They not the top five company. You know. <laughs> I mean, the game changed now, man. I mean, when you, I, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming when you came out of, uh, came out of CR England, you was, you was like with one trainer and did the damn thing. Now CR uh -huh. England got like. Got like three bunks, and the trainer is training two people at a time. How do you feel about that? Uh, man, it was it was bad when I was in it, you know, because you did phase one, phase two training of like twenty, thirty thousand miles total that you got to do within the two phases. Mm -hmm. But with phase one, is that's you getting your CDLs and waiting for your first trainer. So that's phase one. And phase one, you can, let's say if you already an employee there and you're just a trainer, you can, and you're a phase one trainer, you can have two students at one time. Oh, okay. So even with two bunks in the truck, they was doing three people in one truck. So when I was there in November, like, November 2012, and I graduated from them in January 2013, it was three of us in one truck. <laughs> Bruh, how, how is that? How is that though, man? I mean, three of you guys in one truck. I mean, for for starters, let's let's talk about the training aspect of in itself. How is it possible for the I mean for the uh, for the trainer guy to actually concentrate on two drivers though? You basically split in your drive shift. Mm -hmm. So it's like you would drive five hours and then you off for 10 and mm -hmm. then the other trainee would drive five hours then he's off for 10 and then whatever's left that needs to be covered the trainer will take care of okay or whatever he has left of his own duty time okay so he has to be he has to be on duty at the same time while you guys are on duty right yep all right so you guys getting so you guys so you guys getting five hours at a time in a in a in a ten hour shift. So yep. being that he's not driving, so he still got like some drive time within his fourteen, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So when so at the end of the day, you guys will basically end at night and then start your shifts in the morning. Okay, so you get to have have any of you guys while training did any overnight driving? Well, over time, um, when he got used to, you know, as a trainer, and you're in a situation where you got two students in the truck, you seeing who has the more capability of handling the, the truck better. Like, who can you really, like, relax behind? Mm -hmm. And with me... I said, my grandfather did it for 13 years. So mm -hmm. I've steered the truck going down the road. I backed the truck up at Home Depot's when we went to. Mm -hmm. So it was like I kind of knew how to handle the truck. So with me, it ended up being if he needed, if the trainer needed rest, I'd be the one driving overnight. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so the so the other so the other dude that you was training with, it's uh, how how did it work out for him? Did 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 he get his license as well too, or oh well? Let yeah. me yeah. Did he get his license as well? Yeah, he got his license, and oh, okay. uh, he basically it was like with what I already kind of knew and about trucking, mm -hmm. 
and it was like I was like a second trainer, <laughs> training oh, okay. him also. So you was training him also. Okay, okay. Right. All right, so CR England. Yeah, so if you guys uh, – remember you guys, I talked about uh, CR England and, and their and their double training aspect. Here's Young Grind letting you guys know how it actually went down over there, man, CR England. So, my dude, man, so you've been in the, you've been in the game for, what, six years now, right? So – uh, what what is the one thing you wish you knew before you got into trucking? Uh, basically, it's you know, um, the industry. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to know more stuff about the trucking industry outside of trucking that comes before just driving a truck. Okay. Um, and you know. It's a lot more than just driving a truck and coming out here in the trucking industry. You know, a lot of people look at us, oh, you just sit behind the wheel and drive. Man, not necessarily, you know, and then you got to have the patience and and mindset and to know yourself of what you can and cannot deal with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what I grew up on of lack of. And, you know, once you make me mad, I'm up and I'm gone. Let's, you know, uh, so. <laughs> let, let's 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 talk about let's talk about your uh, your career a little bit, man, a little bit more. So, how many trucking companies you've been with so far? It's two thousand just starting. About five. About five. So yeah. now, since I've been knowing you, bro, I'm I'm assuming you was with like the last the last few so since i've been knowing you you know you, you had a little bit of you had a little bit of history in your uh trucking career a little bit tumultuous you want to you want to uh talk about talk about a little bit about that yeah uh just about talk about anything you know because it can happen you know what happened to me can happen to anybody mm -hmm. and um uh, you know breakdowns with the trucks you know, requesting home time, not getting home. It, um, you'll run into a, a breakdown matter out here and that's out of your control. But you got the company you you pull it for dispatch up against your head. You know, if you're working with a smaller company, you you have more relationship with with the owner exactly than than dispatch. And when you're dealing with mostly just the owner, it's it could be more treacherous than working with a bigger company because in this aspect of with like where I'm at now out of North Cross, Georgia, MMDR carriers, mm -hmm. we got a small, we're a small company mm -hmm. and they paying 55 cents a mile. Okay, but with 55 so cents a mile, you hit, you hit 2000, you already, you already had a grand. So anything over that is, is profit. Right. So checks averaging, you know, fifteen to two grand based off how how the market is on a load board. Mm -hmm. But he would like for you to know something about the truck. So like you can't have an air leak and just call and be like, Oh, I have an air leak and don't know where it's at. Mm -hmm. You know, so but you know, so, it's like <laughs> So you so so you, you pulling for you you pulling for uh you pulling for this cat uh and like you just said he you want he wants you to know a little bit something about the truck are you are you leasing the truck from him or are you just driving this truck just driving the truck but my mindset and goal is to own the truck you okay. know learning off of him to wanted to be an owner operator and to learn to be an owner operator it's like you have to get to know knowledge of mechanic wise because we're not gonna know, you know, how to fix on your truck or stuff that can be repaired on the side of the road or in the truck stop, mm -hmm. you're gonna be always running into the shop. You know? Like the situation with uh this truck I'm in now, two thousand fifteen Lone Star, it has a regen problem. Okay, okay. The stop engine light the stop engine lights beeping all day. <laughs> exactly. And, I heard it last night when we chopped it up. Yeah. Yeah. And Yesterday I was in the shop for seven hours. The bill came up to thirteen hundred dollars. So wow. it's thirteen hundred dollars expense. Seven hours in the shop, wow. twenty miles down the road, and the truck breaks down again. Mm. 
<laughs> so what what the what 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 the what the what the fleet owner wanted you to do in that in that particular incident? I mean, he already spent thirteen, what you say, thirteen hundred, and it breaks down again. So obviously, the problem wasn't fixed the first time. Right. So when it broke down again, I got on phone with dispatch. I said, "Look, how about you just send me back to Georgia, to the yard, and give me a different truck? And if there's not a different truck available, I just." sit at home and take breakdown pay. <laughs> okay. So I called, the, once I got the phone with dispatch, I called the owner. I said, hey, I advised the dispatch to route me back to Georgia so that you can deal with the truck. And if there's not a truck available, I'll take breakdown pay. Okay. What, so what, said, what was uh, his What was his uh, response to that? They routed me to Chicago to a shop up there. Oh, Okay, so you're <laughs> so so going to Georgia in his mind was out of the question, pretty much. He didn't want, right. in other words, he didn't want you to he didn't want you to sit down and and collect breakdown pay. Oh uh, man, so that's crazy. So did they? So I don't I don't hear no beeping in the background. So did I they, got the truck off of me. So <laughs> I, <laughs> you you did what now? Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. There it is. Okay. There it is. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. you have to like, <laughs> depending on the truck you drive, you know, you gonna have, you know, things happen out here on the road, right. and you just gotta know what to put up with, what not to put up with. Okay. And major, major carriers have just about the same problems. So would you? you know. So would you? I mean, it sounds like since uh, CR England, you you've been rocking out with with uh, smaller outfits. Would you ever, would you ever consider a major carrier? The only major carriers that, out of the companies that I went to, okay, I left CR England. I stay with CR England for what they stand for on the back of their trailer. Mm -hmm. What England stands for is how long I stayed with them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I left CR England, went to US Express. Okay. Oh, the stomping ground. Oh. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Okay. <laughs> Went to U.S. Express. I ran out of Springfield, Ohio Terminal. They had oh, and exhaust. Springfield. That was oh yeah. man, and Springfield too. Come right. on now, <laughs> because, because I was supposed to. Because I I was living in Illinois. I was I was about ten fifteen minutes from the Markham Illinois Terminal. Mm -hmm. But when I got on the phone with Dave Recruiter. They were so much trying to convince me to get on the Dollar General account. I was like, so no. I asked them, I said, well, can no. I have my gun with me? <laughs> they was like, no. Nope. I was like, so I'm not doing Dollar General. Nah, you know, <laughs> you, you know them Dollar Generals, them uh, them them uh, family dollars, they, they are in some inconspicuous. They they in some places. It's, in, yeah, I'm, I'm pronouncing it wrong. You know my <laughs> inconspicuous <laughs> places. Yeah, they, yeah. You no. you can't dodge it. So it is, in most of these stores, you probably gonna be you have to get there, set up, mm -hmm. and you sitting off here in the hood, <laughs> in the worst neighborhood, <laughs> you know. And then you know trucking. Everybody look at truck drivers as oh, they making big money out there. So mm -mm. truck drivers are being targeted. Exactly. A lot. <laughs> because exactly. Especially, fact, uh, especially doing Family Dollar, all that shit. You you there, you putting in hours worth of work, you know, for right. I'm going to say, me personally, even though they tried to say that it's like, well, what was it at the time? $200 for the, uh, yeah. you know, for the unload. That still wasn't worth me working my ass off for, for all of that to, to unload a 53 foot trailer we talking we talking 53 foot trailer um we talking 53 foot trailer top to bottom that's what we talking here so loaded, you, to, loaded from floor to ceiling and wearing all different types of pounds and you got about 15 stops on one trailer <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So with uh, so with that, so with US Express, how long you was with them uh with them before you I stayed about left? I stayed about six months before I left. And 
that was because like I was running, I was solo. I was a lease operator running a team with a guy, and then I was a company team with a homegirl right before I left. And we was on a target dedicated running out of Compton, California to Massachusetts, I think it was. And our truck had an exhaust leak. So I'm like, yo, this truck has an exhaust leak. We in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I'm like, yo, y'all got to get this fixed. It's, you know, it's making me fatigued. So they was like, can the load still make it? I was like, hold on. You asking about the load and not me? Okay. <laughs> you know, I pulled up I, I pull up a I pull up a video, uh, right quick, uh, of a family dollar of what an actual trailer looks like. And this guy right here, I'm not sure uh I'm not sure what his malfunction is or what's going on, but He's steady trying to set up the camera, something awful. But that's that's what it looked like, y'all. Y'all see that right there? Y'all see that? Top, top to bottom. And they and they just throw that shit on in there. Like they just throw it in there. And you and you gotta take that shit off, man. That shit crazy. Alright, man. And and old boy over here talking about it's hot up in there. I, yeah, it is. It's yeah. <laughs> You you gonna be sweating up a storm if you I, I tell you if you're a big guy like me about two fifty about two fifty two fifty five I say after six months I say you'll be about a good two thirty <laughs> if yeah. if not if not skinnier <laughs> yo yeah. man so who so you mentioned your grandfather so other than your grandfather who else uh, most influenced you in this game man just my grandfather. You know, um, trucking wasn't even, you know, the first thing on my mind. Um, I grew up in the south suburbs of Chicago, University Park, Illinois. And, uh, you know, my uh, my neighbor, they was like my mom and my dad growing up. Mm -hmm. And they, they kids was like my brothers. So the oldest one, he was going through job corps in Joliet for military police. And I was going through job corps for military police and other trades. So, and job, the biggest one, I think, is in Kentucky. They had CDO training school down there also. But they, the one in job court, you stay in training longer than going to a company. Mm -hmm. So it'll take you probably like three weeks going through one of these companies out here. But it'll take you like probably like a couple of months in job court. Okay. It's like. They they take longer and they go over more basics than going running through a school. They just like in the first two weeks they want you to have your CDL permit. Mm -hmm. By the third or fourth week they will expect you to be in a hotel room waiting for a trainer. <laughs> so before you got into trucking, man, what what was it? What you was doing before you before you got into trucking? Um, and by my sophomore junior year in high school. I was working within the, the community of landscaping, cleaning up parks, cleaning up trash off the streats, um, all over trucks at UPS up there in Hodgkins, Illinois, off of 294 Hub. Yeah, right and, there, uh, right right there, right off the bend. I know where that at. Yeah. Um, worked at the Tilly Park Amphitheater, doing the parking staff uh, and security. And then uh, graduated school, and like I said, was supposed to go through uh, job corps and they trades, but right before my graduation year, my best friend who I was supposed to go through job corps with passed away. Okay, sorry to hear that. So I was like, okay, he went through job corps, this happened to him, so skip job corps, let me go do another career. So Grandpa I turned 21 September 2012, Grandpa like, okay, 21 now, what you gonna do? I just like, oh, well my homie passed away, so I'm not, only, I'm not even gonna look at Job Corps no more. Mm -hmm. And I just jumped in a truck, and I just love traveling ever since. And that's uh, and that was all she wrote on that. Hold on for a second. Hold on. All right, man. So in this trucking game, you know, you've been in this game for six years, man. What was what was? It was there anything that that you absolutely refused to do? You know, that a dispatcher had asked you or try to get you to do? Is there anything that you would refuse to do? Yeah, New York. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I think I, I think I think anything in the Northeast is is off limits to me. <laughs> have you do. have you have you I drove New York? In this truck here, yes. And um, you know, when I was with US Express, they kept me in the Northeast. U.S. So, Express takes us all in the Northeast. It, it ain't no, right. it ain't no getting away from it. It's they, right. they, they'll get you up in the Northeast and leave you there, like seriously. Right. So like with CR England, like with CR England, my first, like once I got out of the the training phase and was waiting on my training, my first load was to Chicago, then Chicago is to California. So CR England will see you west. Mm-hmm. And U.S. Express will keep you in the Northeast. Man, that's, <laughs> that is so that is so crazy, man. But you know, some of these. Listen here, uh, what, what do you do? You agree with this statement? You you're not a truck driver if you don't drive New York. No, you're a truck driver as soon as you put yourself in the truck. Exactly, exactly, man. So in this uh in this trucking game, man, what what achievements that you that you got out of this uh that you got out of this game? Now I know you went through you you went through some ups and downs, but what were some of the achievements that you that you achieved out of it? Um, you know, I had goals of places I wanted to go to. Um, you know, my twenty fifth birthday, I was like, Okay, I'm doing my twenty fifth birthday in Vegas. I did that. Um, but right now, you know, it's um, I, I'm 28 now, so mm-hmm. I've been trucking since 21, and my goal is to have five trucks by the time I'm 35. Okay, and you 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 are right. on the, you on course for that, aren't you? Yeah, I'm on course for that, and uh, you know, so this you know just more aspects of you know I'm thinking about next year going diesel mechanic. Oh, okay, then, trying to get trying to get some more experience up under your belt. That's that's a good thing. Right. Uh, so once I go, like I get my first truck and I'll run my first truck, you know, alone to build up money because it's like I see it at companies, like smaller companies. Mm-hmm. They'll they they had the money, but when your truck breaks down, they they struggle to fix the money to have the money to fix your truck or pay you. Okay. Some small companies, man, it's like they they pay you good, but their equipment sucks. Like seriously, yeah. I'm like, not not to say my company, you know what I'm saying? But when I when I first came on, the the thing that I wish that I that I had is a new truck. But you got to understand something: the bells and whistles is not. It's it's not conducive. You see what I'm saying? In, getting yeah, getting the, the pay is. Yeah. And you know, uh, I just posted up on my Facebook status yesterday. You know, um, I have a 2004 Freightliner in Columbia in Georgia, but my homeboy his truck broke down in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. So last week, I ran his. I took my load from Tulsa, Oklahoma, to Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And then I went up 100 miles to pick up his load, and I took his load to Brooklyn, New York. And when he got back to Georgia, I said, man, you can have my Columbia since right. your truck is down. So then I got in this truck here, 2015 International Lone Star. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you see a lot of guys out here that want to be owner-operators and talk about, oh, I won't drive an old truck. But my 2004 Columbia versus this 2015 or in or newer trucks, you know, my 2004 don't have the death, don't have regen. You know, I'm not spending $1,300 on the shop for the truck not to get fixed. And just for the death filter that's always seemed to be clogged up, it costs at minimum 2500 That's for the aftermarket. For a brand new one, it's like 6000 So you would suggest, so you would, you would suggest the, uh for new jack that's coming in that's thinking about going on or out to start off with a with an older model truck with good miles yeah okay if you can i, I would suggest getting an older truck they probably got you know most definitely done already had an overall on it uh which means rebuilt engine probably rebuilt or new transmission in it and just run with that 
but coming out and getting a brand new truck and your death filter clogs up, that's just <laughs> a marathon that's just never going to end. Gotcha, gotcha. You know? So, um, this truck was in the shop yesterday for seven hours. They said yeah. they plugged up to the computer. They said knock sensor. They put a knock sensor in here, ran ran the region. They reached him for like three or four hours. But altogether, it was, it was in the shop for seven hours. That's seven. That's miles. seven. That's seven hours right there. That's 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 off your pay. I mean, you only getting right. right down pay. That's 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 ugly, man. I mean, I was in the but shop. I was in the shop down here in Houston for like a week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was in the shop for well, a week, but I did get paid though. Got paid good actually. Yeah, because they go, they mostly go off of how many days you're down with mm -hmm. the breakdown pay. They don't go off of hourly breakdown pay. Right. So it's 24 to 24 hours on on, yeah. on you. Okay. Hey, man, you've been, you, you've been in it for, for six years. If there's anything that you could change about trucking, man, what, what would it be? Hours of service. <laughs> <laughs> you say you're deaf. What would you do with that? Get rid of it all together, or 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 modify it? Um, typically, you know, it seems unreal to just get rid of it all together, right? But to modify it, okay. And that is, if you start your clock, okay, you did your ten hour break, you got your eleven, your fourteen, your seventy. Right. That's all you need. <laughs> you're 11, you're 14, you're 70. Okay. That's all you need. The 30 minute break you don't need. When you stop your clock, your 14 hour just don't run out. Okay. It stops. So you can just up and drive when you want to. And you have the privilege to go, you know, make a carry. Just want to stay on electronic logs. Okay. If you're not with a magic carrier, you can run paper logs. Okay. You know, because it just seemed like. Them on these electronic logs, they just trying to reduce trucking accidents, and it's, you can't stop nah. nothing else. You can't stop nothing else in America from happening, so you can't stop a truck accident. Nah, you 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 can't you you can't stop uh, trucking accidents. This and there's way too many. I I passed up at least at least four of them on my way down here to Texas. It's like it's like you're gonna pass a trucking accident at least one time a day. And that's yeah. that's kind of sad, man. That's 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 kind of sad. Maybe it's because of the way they're driving. Maybe they're tired. Maybe whatever the case, they're not paying attention. But you know, it's always a trucking accident at least once. I see once a day, man. Man, that's that is that is uh that is so crazy. So that brings me to my next question, man. Especially dealing with accidents. What is something about trucking that people don't appreciate? Uh, the freedom, you know, um, trucking and, you know, hearing different people's stories, you know, Zillow and Facebook and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we spend a lot of time at, you know, our shutdown locations at truck stops and they have the driving lounge in there and people in there talking. And people look at, oh, okay, trucking changed your life, you know, you able to pay bills and have money to play with and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you know, it's like I tell people, you go off your mindset, you know what I'm saying? And, or your gut feeling. So if you get out here and you feel uncomfortable because of bad weather, or whatever, pull over, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the cleaner you keep your license, the longer you stay in here, the more money you make. So, and it's all it's gonna be off of you. It's not gonna be off your trainer. It's not gonna be off the company threatening you, dispatch one of you know, threatening you with verbal words. Guess what? You always gonna get another job as long as your CDL's clean. But as soon as you put in fear that you're gonna lose your job and you go out here and you're unsafe, you're gonna mess up and you don't want that one mistake to cost you your CDLs or your life. You know, definitely it's all about keeping your CDLs clean. Um, with that said, that's kind of segue in me and in in thinking about what happened to these Celadon. I said it right this time. Celadon. 
So y'all don't have to get at me in the comments no more about mispronouncing the name. Celadine, all right? <laughs> but anyway, um, what, what's your... What's your um, What's your opinion or or th your thoughts on the uh, Celadon situation, man? I mean, Celadon is just another company, you know, that done hit rock bottom and un uninterruptedly closed the doors. Uh, but this goes for, you know, most of the companies that already closed doors. You know, you already know you're in trouble. You've been warned. So there's a way to operate your company and shut it down better than what these companies are doing. You know, you got your drivers out here loaded with with product thousands of miles away from home, you know, only making $800 paychecks, paying bills, but it's going to cost them their paycheck to make it home. And then all your belongings in the truck, it's not going to fit on a train well, or a I mean, bus, bus for that matter <laughs> or a plane. So now you got to throw a lot of stuff away. You know what I'm saying? And so, some, and some of the drivers got pets. Right. And I've seen on Facebook to where the students that was at their training school, they told them to grab their belongings, put them outside and change the door. Wow. And this is at the school. This is at the school. Wait, wait, hold up. Look, back up a little bit. Celadon had a school? In Indianapolis. You know what? Off I called I called Celadon. Well, no, I well actually I didn't call them. They they actually reached out to me and I did to make the call video. And I I think he did mention something about uh something about uh about trekking school. I ain't th I ain't think they uh I ain't think they had that. Well, you know I did a video. I don't know if you've seen it, Grind, but I I did a video. Uh, actually, I did two videos on Celadon. The first video, everybody got on me for mispronouncing the name. I think I was saying Celadon or Silly or whatever the fuck I was saying. Excuse my language. I ain't mean to do it like that. I'm thinking I'm on the phone with my dude. This is how we talk. But um, I uh I. I did a second video because I saw uh, Asian Mai did a video about, you know, not being sorry for that, for the drivers. And I, I did a video in response to that. And then I came across another video, uh, a news video, actually, where they was talking about uh, the drivers, you know, and their situations. And it was one driver young, uh, a lady driver was talking about uh how bad it is they that they're lease drivers and now they don't know what they're going to do my thing my thing was this after i watched it i i i sort of said to myself it goes back to me saying don't feel sorry for the drivers but as 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 company drivers don't feel sorry for them because if they if they CDL is good, we we can bounce back. But yeah. I I flipped the script, and and now that I'm thinking about the lease drivers, that's where I'm feeling sorry for because them the guys that that put all that money into that truck. And now they have to give the truck back. Now they're out of thousands of dollars. And and I, what they gonna do? Got your got your escrow, your maintenance fund, what you you know what you been paid, looking at a paycheck because you've been making, you know, uh, most of the right choices, and now they went bankrupt. And now nobody's getting a paycheck, you know. And nobody's answering your phone calls. So <laughs> it's a big loss. And then Christmas is two weeks away. Yeah, that's that's sad that's sad in a sense right there, man. I mean, being that they being that they'd being let go on on Christmas. I mean, uh, two weeks before Christmas. But still though, what's what's go as a lease driver? What's going to happen to them? 
You know what I'm saying? Are are they going to are they able to get their money back from what they put into the truck? Because you know, you if you're a lease driver for a mega carrier and you leasing, you're paying on that truck every week. And can can we can we take the truck with us now that y'all closed down? What's 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 the situation? Say, in my opinion, I would say no. You can't run off with the truck because the truck is not paid off. No. Nope. And to my to my understanding, they leased that truck out, so they don't even have ownership of that truck. No. Nope. And you don't have paperwork to to for it to be yours. You know, you can't take that truck, rip sell it our name off of it, then go put Landstar on it. They don't want paperwork off that truck. What paperwork do you have to show ownership of that truck? That's the and and again, like I said, that is that is the sad part about it, man. Because you 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 put all your effort, you put all your effort, all your money, all you know, in in the into something that you thought. Hold on, right quick. Hold on right quick. You you put all that money into something that you thought that was going to be, uh, you know, something that was going to be yours at the at the at the end of the day. And now, you know, you're you you're this you're this fifty year old uh, truck driver, and you you don't you know. You you don't know what to do now, you know what I'm saying? It's sad. It's it's really. I mean, is. It, it's sad because it makes you wonder about your own company, you know, and that the market is going down. You know, with driving, you can get over two dollars a mile, two three dollars a mile on the driving side off of brokers, mm-hmm. but now it's down to a dollar fifteen or less. You know. So it's like I can look up the load board on a deck and you got a load going 1,200 miles and it's averaging pay of $1,500 after your fuel and everything you got to pay for what is left for you. Man, that's that's crazy. That is crazy. So I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up this video now, man. What do you think about that, man? You know, they they being in their fifties, that's that's going to be a little bit harder for them. To, I don't even think they it, it's 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 going to start. You know, to start over, it's going to be hard for them to start all over. You know, yeah. uh, I had uh, my my old dispatcher at night out of Indianapolis. They was reaching out to me, wanting me to come back to them, and I told them, I said, "Can I give y'all a suggestion?" They said, "Yeah." I said, y'all are neighbors with with, with uh, Celadon. I said, how about y'all in the mornings go to their hotels, find their drivers, bring them back to y'all terminal, let them do their applications, and put them in the truck. That's that's what they should do, man. Hey, bro. So where you at right now, man? How, how uh, you know, with trucking being so stressful and everything, how how do you uh do your rest, man? What what do you do? Music, music clears my mind, okay. and then uh, you know, uh, you know, I have y'all at my trucking family to you know to uh to look up to. You know, just open up your mouth and ask questions. Uh, you go out to a situation. You got somebody you trust, you know, speak a mind out. And, we, you know, we out here as a family, you know, regardless of the skin color, nothing like that. We out here as a family. We all out here doing the same thing. And we got to keep each other head up out here, you know. And uh, it's it's like you're making good money out here with the more experience you stay out here and, and put it in your pocket. And it's hard to just walk away and go back home and not make the same amount of money. Exactly, exactly. All right, young grind. Hey, man, where where can uh where where the people can find you at, man? Where, what's your uh, social media outlets? You got me on uh, Facebook, 
Demarco D E M A R K I O Bryant. Right, I got, I got you right here. Okay. Yeah. I got you right here. And, you, uh, you on Instagram or anything like that? I think my Instagram is Young Grind Global. Hold on, right quick. Let me uh see if I can see if I can uh bring you up. You say Young Grind Global? Yeah. Young, uh, young Grind. Is that all words together or? Yes, all words together. Y U N G G R I N D Global. Uh, I see Young Grinder. I think uh, that's my page. <laughs> uh, I see Young Grinder. You said Global, right? G O G O B L A, or uh, yeah, G L O B A L. Uh, yeah, B A L. Uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I'm not seeing nothing. Is it any underscores or anything like that? Still, nope. Uh, oh well. Well, you guys could you you guys could look it up. You guys could look it up. Well, hey, young grind, yo man, I really do appreciate you taking the time and uh, coming on and hollering with us tonight, man. I know you got to get up in the morning and uh, get the moving again. And man, I'm over here. I'm over here in Edgerton, Kansas, and they sitting over here waiting for me. I load us to Chicago, okay. but ain't no load, ain't no loads paying going to Chicago. You know, I'm only, you know, 600 miles from Chicago, so they're looking for a thousand some dollar load, and it ain't paying. Okay, a thousand some dollars. So I delivered my load <laughs> at 11 o'clock this morning, so and I'm just, sitting still at the receiver. So you just, uh, so you just sitting up chilling, man. Well, again, sure, man. Sure. Again, like I said, I appreciate you coming on, sharing your experience with us, man. Uh, you go ahead and uh, stay safe. You know what I'm saying, and be careful out there. Young Grind Grove, uh, Young Grind Global. You guys can find him on uh, Facebook. He's also in uh, some of the Facebook groups. Uh, What's that? BCH. Uh, BCH Live. BC Black Truckers Only. All Truckers United. Yeah. TYG. Yeah. So, we out here, y'all. Y'all so, go so, ahead and keep your so, heads up. So many, so many he can't even figure. <laughs> but he's there, though. He's there. I mean, so. Yeah, y'all get out here and keep your CDLs clean. Keep your heads up and uh, stay safe. All right, brother, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks a lot for hollering at me this evening, bro. All right, like I'll see you out here, brother. Stay safe. Happy Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. Hey, you too, man. Young Grind Global, y'all. Young Grind Global. All right, you too. All right. All right, peace. All right, you